Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul J. in Baltimore, and welcome to The Ratner Report. And now joining us from New York is Michael Ratner. Michael is the President Emeritus of the Center for Constitutional Rights in New York. He's the U.S. Attorney for Julian Assange. He's also a board member of The Real News. Thanks for joining us again, Michael. Always good to be with you and The Real News, Paul. So let me just start you off with a question. The, 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 we know what the Ferguson grand jury decided. They're not going to indict. Uh, the, there's demands the federal government should intervene. Uh, President Obama, obviously Attorney General Holder. The question is, do you think that Michael Brown's civil rights were violated? Should the federal government intervene? You know, I have no doubt they should intervene. I mean, if people listen to that press conference by the prosecutor and the analysis that have been done by some lawyers of what was presented to the grand jury, it seems like one of the more biased presentations uh, that I can recall. Of course, we don't often see what happens in the grand jury, uh, but apparently uh, the officer, Officer Wilson, was barely questioned, very easygoing. His story allowed to unfold before the grand jury. Uh, the people who, quote, contradicted his story were severely questioned, uh, made to look like they might not be truth-telling in front of the grand jury, uh, and then we come out with a no indictment. I think that you could say that the prosecutor was aiming for that. His presentation, certainly to the public, made it seem that way. Uh, in that case, there's federal law that says when your civil rights are violated, uh, essentially when you're murdered like that by a police department, uh, that there's a federal crime, you can investigate and indict people for that. That's what was done throughout the South as the Southern movement, uh, as the Southern uh, sheriffs refused justice system uh, refused to go after people. You had several federal civil rights complaints to the extent you could get the Justice Department to move. We're in that situation today. Uh, we see Holder and Obama still there. Uh, we don't see any indication that they're planning uh, to, to start a federal investigation, federal grand jury. Uh, and so I, I find that to be remarkable, particularly it's not like uh, what happened to, uh, to Michael Brown was the only case in the country. That's one. We've had a couple in New York recently a chokehold case, another one of a, of a young black man murdered in a hallway of an apartment building. Uh, we had the 12-year-old uh, killed in Cleveland. We're talking about a national epidemic of the killing of black people. And it seems to me it's absolutely imperative that the federal government step in here and start to tell these local police departments, you can't kill with impunity the way you're killing. Uh, and certainly the people in the country are saying that. I mean, I was a demonstration in New York last night, which was the second night after. Um, thousands of people everywhere in the city, every street, even with traffic on it, was just closed down by people. They took over the streets, closed all the access to Manhattan. And that took place in 170 cities in this country. So the people in this country, particularly black people, are saying to this government, do something about this epidemic, this racial, racist police killing. And yet we see Obama and Holder being very, very passive in the face of it. They should be national leaders on this and insist on a civil rights uh, investigation of what happened in Ferguson, what's happened in New York, what's happened in Cleveland, and what's happened across the country. Right. Now, if you look at the, administ the Obama administration and Holder's role, what's their record on these kinds of issues? Well, you know, the record I've been looking at lately in the last couple of weeks, Paul, uh, is Obama and issues I work on having to do with national security. Uh, and it's awful. It's Obama basically being incredibly weak, uh, bowing to national security establishment, the military, uh, law enforcement, et cetera. And there's three examples uh, that have come to my attention in the last uh, 10 days. One is national security agency spying. That's the collecting of all of our metadata from our telephones uh, that's been going on now and uh, going on for years, but in, to our knowledge, since uh, Snowden did the revelations a year and a half ago about the massive metadata uh, spying. Obama gives speeches on it. He talks about it. He even said in the recent movie on Snowden, well, I, we were doing something about it. But in fact, he hasn't done anything. And that what we had was a defeat last week of the USA Freedom Act, which was an attempt by Congress to begin to rein in some of the uh, government spying, particularly this NSA program about massive metadata. It failed by two votes. They got 58 votes. They needed 60 in the Senate. It was a weak bill. This very administration, the Obama administration, had weakened it on privacy matters, on transparency. It failed by two votes, and therefore we have no law, and we have a continuation of massive NSA spying. Now, Obama and others blame Congress. Well, let's not blame Congress here. 
while this may be authorized by the law, according to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, it doesn't mean the NSA has to do it. Today, tomorrow, last month, last year, next year, Obama could ban that NSA mass data surveillance immediately. It's up to him. Let's not let him put it off on Congress. Let Obama do something on it. So that's one example. A second example is what's going on with the torture report now. Your viewers may be familiar with the torture report. 6,300 pages issued by a Senate committee who investigated the CIA's role in black sites and torture. 6,300 pages, apparently incredibly damning to the CIA. Names, 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 who did it, where they did it, how they authorized torture under Bush. Have we seen a word of it, Paul? We haven't seen a word. The 500-page summary uh, was supposed to be released last month, the month before, the month before. Where is it being held up? The 500-page summary is at the White House. The White House is insisting on more and more redactions in the report. Senator Feinstein says we're not going to go along with that. You're basically uh, disabling that report from having any meaning. And so now we're stuck again. But where is it being held up? Not even by Senator Feinstein, who's very conservative on many of these surveillance issues. It's being, it's being held up by Obama and the White House. Yeah, I was, I was going to say Feinstein has a reputation of being uh, essentially the CIA's representative on the Hill. They've, they've had a fight recently over process. But the fact that Feinstein wants to let this stuff out and Obama, Obama doesn't is, is, is in, in kind of more damning. I agree with you. I mean, Senator Feinstein has been a, a sure thing for the CIA in Congress. And here she is saying, get this report out. We're only getting the executive summary, and Obama is holding it up. So that's example two. So we have NSA. We have um, a torture report. And the third one, of course, that's close to me, because I brought the original Guantanamo cases, are Obama's promise to close up Guantanamo in a year of taking office. That would have been 2010. Made the promise in 2009. We're still, we're still despite the recent seven releases, we're still sitting with 142 people in Guantanamo, half of them cleared for release. Obama blames Congress for it. Um, but of course, Obama could do tomorrow what he's blaming Congress for stopping today. So you have those three cases. And then on top of it, as we started this show, um, with Obama's incredible weakness on what's going on in Ferguson. I mean, it's utterly, utterly shocking to me um, that this president uh, hasn't taken more forcefulness with regard to these fundamental issues. Uh, this demand for the Department of Justice to intervene, I mean, it's a legitimate demand. People have a right to it. The Department of Justice should. Uh, occasionally it does with police forces. Uh, why do you think the Department of Justice actually does intervene sometimes? There are some police departments across the country where the DOJ does get involved. They sometimes have ordered reforms, created some forms of civilian review. Uh, what, what motivates them when they do? You know, I think part of it is uh, when there's an effort actually in that town to actually take on their own police departments and there's a difficulty in doing so, recently happened in New Orleans, where there were many, many killings of people. And I guess they just couldn't look aside uh, in that case. It happened in Philadelphia, as I recall, uh, under Rizzo, um, when there was just so many police killings, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't ignore it. Uh, I also think, and hopefully, that this massive outpouring in 170 cities will force the Justice Department to act. But in the end, you know, that's the Justice Department. They'll do, they have some resources, they'll do some of it in some police departments. Maybe they'll get to it in Ferguson. I mean, Ferguson is particularly egregious. If you look at the fact that there's 53 policemen uh, in Ferguson in a town that's three quarters black, three quarters, 53 policemen, three of whom are black. Think about that. A city council that only has one black member out of six. The place is like a southern plantation town, you know, 100 years ago. Uh, and that's what's going on. Uh, that the federal government hasn't intervened is amazing. But as I said, um, I wouldn't just depend on Obama and Holder, partly because they're clay, they have clay feet, and partly because even if they do, you don't want attention diverted now from the massive, massive demonstrations we're seeing uh, that are trying to force, force police departments, not just in Ferguson, but around the country, uh, to stop killing young black people. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the Department of Justice demand, while it's people have a right to demand it, to have any kind of some idea that they're really going to intervene in any serious way, is, is the kind of delusional. Uh, the Department of Justice, I think, doesn't like the most extreme excesses. They don't want to see what happened after Rodney King. 
but once things kind of normalize, the abuse normalizes, uh, there needs to be some method where people get engaged, get organized, and number one, in, insist on some kind of civilian review boards with real power to hire and fire the police chief to exercise real discipline over the police force. And even if you have a really good piece of legislation, we've been talking about this on The Real News, if there isn't a mass movement to insist on the execution of this legislation, it usually doesn't get used either. And the community really needs to do more than just protests, which the protests are critical. But there needs to be some organization to assert some power. I, you know, I think that's completely right. And you know, what always concerns me, even with this massive demonstrations we're seeing, uh, is that it can fizzle out um, because there's not enough organization and leadership in it. Hopefully that won't be the case, that we're seeing young leaders emerging in Ferguson and in other places that we'll be able to take this somewhere else. And we have seen an incredible escalation since the murder in, in Ferguson, of since the murder of Brown in, uh, in Ferguson. It's, it's been increasing. Um, so perhaps we're at the verge of really something historic, really something incredibly historic. All right, thanks very much for joining us, Michael. Thank you for having me, Paul, on The Real News. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.